july eighteenth camillus de lellis founder of the ministers of the sick camillus de lellis was born in the year fifteen fifty at bocianico in the abruzzi region of italy when his mother was nearly sixty he grew to be a very big man six feet six inches tall and when he was seventeen he went off with his father to fight with the venetians against the turks but soon he had contracted that painful and repulsive disease in his leg that was to affect him the rest of his life in the year fifteen seventy one he was admitted to the san giacomo hospital for incurables at rome as a patient and a servant after nine months he was dismissed for his quarrelsome behavior and he returned to active service in the turkish war though camillus habitually referred to himself as a great sinner his worst disorder was an addiction to gambling that continually reduced him to poverty and shame all playing at lawful games for exorbitant sums and all gains of hazard for considerable sums are forbidden by the law of nature by the law of civilized nations and by the canons of the church such considerations if they were ever put plainly before camillus left him cold in the autumn of fifteen seventy four he gambled away his savings his arms everything down to the proverbial shirt which was stripped off his back in the streets of naples the indignance to which he had reduced himself and the memory of a vow he made in a fit of remorse to join the franciscans caused him to accept work as a laborer on the new capuchin buildings at manfredonia there a moving sermon by one of the friars made him complete his conversion ruminating on it as he rode upon his business he at length fell on his knees and with tears deplored his past unthinking life and cried to heaven for mercy this happened on candlemas day in the year fifteen seventy five the twenty-fifth of his age and from that time he never interrupted his penitential course he entered the novite of the capuchins but could not be admitted to the profession on account of the disease in his leg he therefore returned to the hospital of san giacomo and devoted himself to the service of the sick the administrators having been witness to his charity and ability after some time appointed him superintendent of the hospital in those days the spiritual and physical conditions in the hospital were such as it is now difficult to credit conditions largely due to the necessity of employing staff that could be got even criminals camillus grieving to see the unscrupulousness and the slackness of the hired servants in attending the sick started a project where he would search out only those who wanted to work in the hospital out of a motive of charity he found several persons so disposed but met with great obstacles in execution of his design particularly from the jealousy and suspicion that are so often provoked by the disinterested reformers to make himself more useful in spiritually assisting the sick he resolved with the approval of his confessor st philip neri to receive holy orders and was ordained by bishop bishop thomas goodwell the exiled last bishop of the old english hierarchy he was also endowed by a roman gentleman by the name of fermo calvi who gave him an annuity on the day of his ordination camillus decided to sever connections with san giacomo and start on his own though to do so was contrary to the advice of st philip so with two companions he laid the foundations of his congregation he prescribed certain short rules and they went every day to the great hospital of the holy ghost where they served the sick with so much affection and diligence that it was visible to all who saw them that they considered christ himself as lying sick or wounded in the hospital they made the beds of patients paid them every office of charity and by their exhortation disposed them for the last sacraments and happy deaths the founder had powerful adversaries and great difficulties to struggle with but through his confidence in god he conquered them all in the year fifteen eighty five he purchased a larger house and the success of his undertaking encouraged him to extend his activities so he ordained that the members of his congregation should bind themselves to serve persons infected with the plague prisoners and those who lie in private houses later in the year fifteen ninety five and sixteen o one some of his religious were sent 
with the troops fighting hungary and croatia thus forming the first recorded military field ambulance nothing can deprive henry duant of his honor for the part he played in the foundation of the international red cross but the memory should not be lost of those who before him concerned themselves with the wounded in battle who include st camillus de lelis as well as florence nightingale in fifteen eighty eight camillus was invited to naples with twelve companions and there founded a new house certain galleys having the plague on board were forbidden to enter the harbor so the ministers of the sick went on board and attended to them on which occasion two of their number died of the pestilence they were the first martyrs of charity for this institute st camillus showed a like charity in rome when a contagious fever swept off great numbers and again when that city was visited by a violent famine in the year fifteen ninety one gregory the fourteenth made this congregation into a religious order for perpetually serving the sick there are now reckoned as clerks regular there are about equally divided among priests and lay brothers and follow the original work of nursing all the sick persons without distinction privately or in hospitals or elsewhere the founder was as has already been said himself afflicted with many corporal sufferings the disease in his leg for forty-six years a rupture for thirty-eight years two sores in the sole of one of his feet which gave him great pain and for a long time before he died a distaste for food and the ability to retain it under these complications and infirmities he would not suffer any one to wait on him but sent all his brethren to serve others when he was not able to stand he would creep out of his bed even at night and crawl from one patient to another to see if they wanted anything among many evils and dangers which the zeal of st camillus prevented his attention to the care of the dying soon made him discover that in hospitals many were buried alive hence he ordered his religious to continue the prayers for souls yet in their agony for at least a quarter of an hour after they seemed to have drawn their last breath and not to suffer their faces to be covered so soon as was usual lest those who were not dead should be smothered st camillus saw the foundation of fifteen houses of his brothers and eight hospitals and almighty god acknowledged his zeal and selflessness by the spirit of prophecy and the gift of miracles and by many heavenly communications and favors the saint laid down the hierarchical leadership of his order in the year sixteen o seven but he assisted at the general chapter in rome in sixteen thirteen and after it with new superior general visited the houses giving them his last exhortations at general he was extremely ill he recovered so as to be able to finish the visitations of his hospitals but soon relapsed and his life was now despaired of he received the viaticum from the hands of cardinal genasi and when he received the last anointing he made a moving exhortation to his brethren he expired on july fourteenth in the year sixteen fourteen being sixty-four years old st camillus de lelis was canonized in the year seventeen forty six and was with st john of god declared a patron of the sick by pope leo the thirteenth and of nurses and nursing associations by pope pius the eleventh st camillus venerated the sick as living images of christ and by ministering to them in this spirit he did penance for the sins of his youth led a life precious in merit and from a violent and quarrelsome soldier became a gentle and tender saint